So if we're learning anything today, it's the fact that Photoshop sometimes it's a bit like never in my life has my sketchbook like me over ever. Love that for me. Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna be doing a little challenge, or actually more of like two challenges combined into one. I've seen this around on YouTube. They are the one layer challenge and the no undo challenge. If you are familiar with digital painting, you know like layers are your best friend because they make your life so much simpler and undo it's like literally your husband or wife or whatever when you're digital painting because like every mistake you make you can like go back and undo it literally you cannot live without these two and today i am living without these two so i am left alone in the photoshop world so we might struggle a little but i guess that's sort of the point point. and we're gonna do this challenge as we do a master study a master study means that i'm gonna recreate a famous painting from a master and the point of the master study is for you to observe and see how that master did that illustration or painting how they use color how they did the composition how they did the brush strokes and you will learn and take some of that maybe into your own work I'll explain better a few more things as we go but in the meantime let's just get into this and maybe see myself struggle a little bit Alright, so after I went and looked at a lot of famous paintings, I decided to settle on the Mona Lisa. They say it's the most famous painting in the world, right now it's like sitting in the Louvre. I think that's how you pronounce that, my French is not that good. And I'm not super sure if this is the best decision. Part of me thinks, oh this might be too simple, but also part of me thinks it might come back and bite me in the ass because it might turn out super hard. So the only exception that I ask you guys to give me, the only pass I will ask and justify, it's my palette layer. So I'm gonna have a layer on top of my working layer, which is going to be for my palette. And I actually went in and like I chose those colors myself. So with that said, let's just start with the sketch. So like I usually start, I'm like basically just blocking my shapes, um, pretty straightforward. Big shapes first, and then I start like adding more details. Also like very simplified shapes, so mostly lines, squares, triangles, to just sort of place everything where it eventually will be. No! Cannot use the undo. As you can tell, like I already like tried to use the undo button because that's like second nature to me. Like I'm so used to always have like my hand here and just hit command C whenever something goes wrong or not wrong, but like doesn't look perfect. So for that, I'm going to be putting my hand back here while I do this. But yeah, so let's continue doing our sketching. There's like some mountains in the back. Um, yeah, here's like another little mountain. And again, I am not hitting undo. I cannot hit undo. Basically, I will try to do it as traditional as possible and approach it like I usually see traditional artists do their paintings. And for example, if I need to erase instead of erase, I'm gonna use the background color to paint on top of my line. I wouldn't consider myself to be a traditionally trained artist, but I did mess around with charcoal for a while and also like with paintings. Like I love how oil paintings look, I love how wash paintings look. So I always try to incorporate that sort of textures into my style. All right, this hasn't been that traumatizing yet. Even if you were not doing this challenge, like the sketch situation, it's fine even though I would have used like three layers on this. Well, right now I'm like only using none. But this is where it's probably gonna start getting tricky. Because for example, when it comes to layers, a lot of people would divide or separate the subject from the background. In this situation, we don't have that. I'm actually not sure if I should start with the background or if I should start with the subject. <sighs> So I'm gonna go with the background, even though normally I would start with the subject. But in this case, since probably later on we're gonna have to overlap, like paint on top, since we know that the background is behind, probably when we paint the background, some of that will bleed into the subject. So probably it's better to do the subject after because that will cover whatever bleeding we have into the subject. That got wordy, I'm sorry, but hopefully you guys get the idea. Also, another disclaimer, I'm gonna have to take my hand out, but I promise you I will not be cheating. With that said, I'm a little bit scared, but let's just trust the process and move forward. That's what you always gotta do, trust the process and move forward. So, taking this as an opportunity to explain layers even better, yes, like literally this background, I would divide this into so many layers, like these hills in the back would be one layer, then the hills and the water in the center in the middle would be another layer, which would be my 
sort of mid-ground, and then the hills here, like the warm hills that are the closest to her, would be on another layer. So I would have like probably like three different layers just to separate the background, and probably like more layers to add the details into those layers. But that's not the case today. So yeah, you're seeing how all these will just become one big thing. All right, this is looking very sloppy. This is giving, I don't know what I'm doing, but let's continue. Let's just now jump into the actual subject, the Mona Lisa, and then we'll revisit the background later on. All right, and the way that I'm approaching this, it's first on the subject, I'm going to block all the dark shapes, and then I'm gonna go in and block the rest with a light color. Like you can see like the face, the torso, the hands, and I'm dividing everything into like those two tones. So this will be my base, and now I'm gonna go in and start adding a mid-tone. And I promise you guys that if there's one thing I'm gonna make a lot of effort to get right, it's the mouth, because that's what she's known for. So I'm definitely gonna try to have the mouth look correct. It doesn't look that correct right now, but we'll make it happen somehow at the end. Well, it's freaking out right now. All right, so we had a little mishap. We had a little issue where the spinning wheel of death, or however you people call it, showed up. It came to pay a visit to me, and long story short, Photoshop crashed. So I lost a lot of my progress, but I decided to redo it, and I did it already. So here is the new one. You're gonna have to take my word, but I promise you that I stay loyal to the challenge. I did not use the undo. I did not use more layers. Honestly, it's like pretty messy, so you have to believe me. But now, at least, she has like a little bit more form. The Mona Lisa or Lisa or whoever, it's looking better. The background definitely needs love still. But now, what I'm gonna start doing, it's sort of like blending. So for example, if I have these two areas, right, I'm gonna lower my deposit of my brush, paint, I was about to do a layer, but now I cannot do that. So I'm going to take this color and then I'm gonna softly paint on top of my yellow, and then I'm gonna color pick from the color in between, and I'm gonna start painting in between. That already shows you how to blend if you didn't know how to. That's what I'm going to do across the whole painting, and I'm gonna continue focusing on Lisa, and then we'll leave the background last. And something else that I wanted to say regarding the challenge, like the one layer situation, it actually goes beyond being a challenge. Because yes, like layers are amazing, and they come in handy, and they have like a lot of benefits. However, the moment that you are relying too much on layers and relying too much on that undo button, like you start becoming very careless. I think that's the word. And you start becoming very careless when it comes to your workflow. Because in your mind, you're just thinking, oh, whatever mistake I make, I can fix it. But I think there's certain benefits as well of being like economical and intentional with what you're doing. So this challenge or exercise actually helps you to learn how to be intentional and how to be economical and efficient when it comes to your layers. You have to be kidding me. Well, we just had a little blackout apparently and now this is off and all the lights are off so clearly I cannot keep doing this. So you have to wait, hopefully I don't have to wait too long doing this. Um, you know, I said this could go both ways, but clearly it's going in the wrong <laughs> one of those two. Power went out. Right now it's like raining outside. I don't know if you hear it. Small thunderstorm. So just bear with me. I mean, at least you can tell it's the Mona Lisa. And also you can hear the rain. Let's just jump into the background. Let's just jump in. The world's against me today. But in the meantime, let me just try to get this girl looking at least okay. So let's continue with this. I mean, the spinning color wheel of death has come again. If it crashes, I will lose some of the progress. 
I'm trying to go now with a narrative of like, you know, being relatable. And yeah, now this is just me talking to myself while this thing keeps like spinning. That's the second time Photoshop crashes on me today. So if we're learning anything today, it's the fact that Photoshop sometimes it's a bit Like never in my life has my sketchbook like me over. Ever. Love that for me. I went ahead and redid everything I lost. Here she is. The girl that's like testing my patience today, there she is. And she's looking okay. She's not looking 100% there yet, but I'm going to continue and do the background. Let's just cross our fingers so there's no more crashing. And I can just finish this today. It'll be some sort of study. It's fine. All right, and now that we're fully focusing on the background, looking at these shapes in the back, they're very, very abstract. Like, it's hard to tell if they're like trees or if they're rocks or if they are mountains. So I'm going to render them very loosely, but I'll try to keep the essence as best as I can. And I am currently using an oil pastel brush, which is very nice because it really lets the colors underneath still show. So let's start adding some detail to these mountains back here. I'm gonna add more detail on the water. And then here's that little road. Well, I think that's a road from what I can see or interpret. And something that I really, really, really enjoy, it's the sky. Like, I love these sort of skies, you know, that create some sort of, like, vignette. They're very characteristic of like traditional paintings. They're really good to focus the attention of the viewer into one spot. You can see this is sort of like a vignette here around Lisa or like the Mona Lisa or however you want to call her. But yeah, I think that's very nice and I think we're capturing, capturing it very nicely. Okay, I'm also gonna go back to the hands and add like a little bit more detail on these. Now that I'm getting more comfortable with the brush. And I know I didn't pay a lot of attention to the, the sleeves, but that's like folds and cloth. So that gets very, very tricky. And again, I don't have 16 years to do this. Da Vinci spent 16 years painting the Mona Lisa. And if I'm not mistaken, he used a type of paint that would take like days to dry or something. So it was like constantly like, like he would paint and wait and paint and wait. I'm not spending that much time today. So now let's take a closer look at the overall painting. Here you can see the face, the smile it's okay, it's not like amazing. The hands, like I said, they're okay. The arms are not the best. Let's look at the background. I think this turned out nice. Again, it's a very like abstract interpretation, but I think the colors look really pretty, so that's nice. And if you look at it here, in this very little tiny, tiny, tiny thumbnail, it looks great. That's literally good enough. All right, and now that we're officially, officially, officially done with this. I will say that I definitely bit more than what I could chew today. Did I pass the one layer challenge? Yes, because like I kept it all in one layer. On that, I did not cheat at all. Did I pass the no undo challenge? Well, after Photoshop crashes on you two times and you lose a lot of your work, you have to take some shortcuts. I'm sorry. And then, was the master study successful? Honestly, it didn't turn out as bad as I thought it was going to turn out. Did I learn something? Probably. One, I need to save more frequently. Two, I like to say Photoshop is my best friend, but today I was reminded that he can really f me over. Three, I was reminded not to give up and to persevere. I definitely did that today. And honestly, I don't even have the energy to do the rest, but yeah, you know the gig. Like, like, subscribe, here are my socials, and definitely this video was like a little bit messy, so I apologize for that. But at the same time, I hope that you learn something. Even if it's like to not give up, that's it. That was your lesson today. And hopefully, I will see you in the next one.